I mean, thank you so much, and thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, this meeting, uh, the purpose of it, and the intent is to inform you and give you some information that's concerning uh, the village of Burnham, concerning the uh, golf course. Uh, and again, I like to I like to welcome you and thank you for coming out. We appreciate that. And this meeting is for the future of a golf course, whether it's one in Burnham or not, is up. Uh, debate and discussion. So um, uh, I was approached by um, an employee, uh, a person that used to work for Burnham, and the person said to me that I was trying to close the Burnham Golf Course. I have no authority to build Burnham. I have no authority whatsoever <clears throat> concerning the Golf Course. So the Golf Course is solely controlled by the Forest Preserve. You're speaking for Preserve. I mean, the jurisdiction of Cook County, part of Cook County. And so you was invited here, and you, and you was invited here because it was my idea of administration to inform you of what was going on. So if I was trying to close it up, well, I don't think I would have told you. So with that being said, we would have Ms. Ms. Tracy, I need to come up now. And, and when the golf course is done, I would like to meet with the, uh, some of the people from Brown for a few minutes to get some other things that I would like to come to. Thank you, Mayor. Can you all hear me? Because I want to get closer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, thank you, Mayor. So, again, my name is Tracy Bishop. So, I'm with the Forest Preserves of Cook County. I am the director of the Permits, Rentals, and Concessions Department. I also, and I'm asking to hold his hand up, David. David Panage is our project manager that works within our department. And I think Lenora just stepped away. But Lenora is our new business development manager. <laughs> And she mainly focuses on a lot of our concession uh, opportunities within the Forest Preserve of the county. So before we get started with the presentation, um, if by short hands, how many people have actually golfed at the Burnham Woods Golf Course? Perfect. And so I'm assuming everybody else, um, do, let me see this. For those of you that have not golfed, do you know where the golf course is by short hands? Yeah. And for example, you know, so, but we don't have classes in the Perfect. Thank you so very much. Okay, great. I just want to make sure that we have a good mixture of people. So the way this is pretty much set up for today, now that we have everybody here, I just want to give you a little background information about pretty much why me and my team are here and speaking with you today. So it's going to be a little informal. It's take up about five, ten minutes of your time just to give you the information, and then from that point, we're going to ask everybody to kind of get up and we're going to converse with each other and we have boards here to the uh, to my left where we have some images and some ideas and some thoughts that we want you to uh, give us some feedback on. So I do, I just want to be clear. We have not decided to close anything. We have not decided to make anything into any additional space. We are here as part of the initial process and I know you all don't see us often, but that's going to change. But we, as part of the initial process, we want to actually hear from you, those that actually golf, those that live in an area that actually at least know where it is and, and may live nearby. So we want to hear from you before we issue any recommendations to the commissioners and to our interim superintendent. Is that fair? All right. So I'm going to ask everybody just, again, keep an open mind. And, and I just want to make sure we know that nothing has been decided. So everything that we go through and talk about today is just some suggestions and thoughts just to kind of get your brain moving to see exactly which direction we should go in. Uh, David? So just to kind of give you an idea of the Forest Preserve to set this conversation up, so the mission of our Forest Preserve is to acquire, restore, and manage lands for purpose of protecting and preserving public open space with its natural wonders, significant prairies, forests, wetlands, rivers, streams, and other landscapes with all of this associated wildlife and a natural state for the education, pleasure, and recreation for the public and now and in the future. So our focus is on recreation, but also protecting nature. Okay, so just keep that in mind as well. Next slide. So again, why are we here? We really want to make sure that with whatever plan that occurs after this meeting and as well as we've done a few past meetings, but we want to make sure that we have enough feedback to really contribute toward decision making. We don't want everyone in our office to make the decisions and we don't actually utilize the golf course as much as you all or even live in the neighborhood. So that's why we want to make sure that we are hearing from you. Next slide. 
So just to give you an idea of the Forest Preserve's portfolio, so we actually operate 11 golf courses. We have a, quite a few in the area, in the south area, and we'll get into those, but of our 11 unique golf courses, we have eight 18 hole golf courses, two nine hole courses, and one standalone drive, driving range. So most of our facilities also are generally at least 40 years old, where we've had some at least since the 1920s. Next slide. So the Forest Reserve has conducted a study. So this started back in 2017. We worked with the National Golf Foundation. They did a full review of all of our golf courses. And really to kind of give us feedback on how they're being ran, some improvements that need to be made, as well as giving us some idea of what the cost is to make some of those improvements that they have uh, identified. So they analyzed the potential improvement of the courses. And then they really gave us feedback. So again, it wasn't necessarily, it was just recommendations. So we didn't have to go with some recommendations on what we need to do to improve the course. Uh, next slide. So with Burnham Woods specifically, which is why we're here, um, and we'll get into a little bit more, but this is actually our fifth time trying to reach um, you all and trying to really get your feedback. So we've been working on this since 2000, uh, 2021. And the reason why we did not move forward is because we did not hear from the people in this room. We did not have enough feedback. We did not know enough information about how the community felt, what the community wanted to do uh, as far as the Burnham Woods Golf Course, which is why it's now 2024 and we're still having that conversation so that we can hopefully move forward with um, a future plan for this golf course. But we did not, we put everything on hold during that time period because we just didn't have enough information and we didn't want to make a decision off of the information that we had. Um, and we didn't think it was fair to have groups in Hanover Park um, or on the north side making decisions for the golf course in the Burnham area. So just to give you an idea with the Burnham Woods golf course, a little history with it. So it is one of our oldest courses dating back to the 1920s. Back in 2003, we did uh, issue a request for a proposal where we were uh, we awarded, it was then Billy Casper Golf, which is now Indigo Golf, who currently runs the golf courses today. So we, this land itself automatically occupies over 100 acres of just the Burnham area. And if everyone has been in this area and familiar, that pretty much makes up majority of your open space within the Burnham area. Okay. It also has nearby wetland marsh and provides critical ecological value. Um, and it is, we hear both sides, but we have heard quite a bit that is perceived unchallenging to some of the golfers because of the hole placement. Um, some people feel, depending on how, I guess, at the end you are in golfing, may think it, it's pretty easy, but majority of the people that are avid golfers have, this is the feedback that we receive. Um, and it also suffers from poor drainage. The last couple of years, because of, you know, everything that's going on with the world and our system, um, there's just been a crazy weather system, but so we haven't really had to close the course as much um, as we did years prior, but it does have some areas where it does suffer poor drainage. Because if you think about it, a lot of the forest preserve is pretty much made so that it captures a lot of the water and keeps the water from going into your homes. So that's how it was initially designed anyway. Next slide. So Burnham, just to give you a little financial context, let me pause. Can everybody see this a little bit? You can see this one? Okay. Didn't know if I need to turn the light down. Perfect. I'm sorry? Turn to see the numbers. It's hard to see the numbers on the left. I'll be able to turn these lights off just on this side. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure. Is that better? Yeah. It could be bigger. Okay. So, Burnham Woods, one of the things that was identified within our National Golf Foundation uh, report, as well as from our current vendor, from the reports that we received, is that the revenue that we are receiving from the course is barely enough to really keep it afloat because of the amount of expenses that it's needed. So over the years, um, again, since at least 2003 and beyond, there has been significant uh, improvements that and capital improvements that need to be made, but a lot of the, because the revenue really isn't matching what the need is, a lot of things have been just repairs here and there instead of complete replacements. So what the National Golf Foundation report gave us was this is how much it will cost to completely replace things. Um, and at that time, that was 2017, and that was over $4 million. So now that we're in 2024, you all can guess how much that has actually increased. And also, 
I'll just step over here. So just to kind of give you an idea of how this has changed from this PowerPoint. So in 2019, if you can look and see 2019, 2020, 2021, for those that can't see the numbers, it's pretty much at level. So there, at no point where we were making more revenue than the amount of expenses, it was pretty much neck and neck. So 2022, which is post COVID, and this has been true for the golf industry as a whole, where we've been seeing more golfers. Because if you all recall, there were at, at one point when everything was shut down, the only activity that you could do was golf. That was the only thing that was pretty much approved by many of the mayors and, and our government officials. So we've seen some um, increase in revenue, but look at the, this is the expense line here. Of course, there's still the expense. So now we found, I found ourselves where the expenses completely exceeded what the revenue that we are actually receiving. Can you explain why that happened in that one year and so, not in the other years? It's time, basically when you have an HVAC system, all of that has a, a term of life. And at some point, that stuff started failing after a few years. So it wasn't anything where a significant, a significant change occurred, but also if you have more golf play, that's going to also put more wear and tear on some of that equipment, which then, again, drives up the expenses. But you can have more players because you haven't invested, you haven't invested before to, the, to make the field properly. Part of that is correct. Part of that is correct. So, correct. so you are steering people to not go in this place, and now it's like we are in the hole, and now this this is the graphic of the data. Well, graphic. let me, and now we can speak again offline because I really want to kind of make sure we have the information so that I can hear from everybody and get everybody's feedback, but I'll just ex answer that question. So the reality is when you have years, and this is only for the last four years, dating back from 2003, this was pretty much standard. So at any point, you're not making enough money to really properly budget for future investments. Because now we're using courses like Joe Lewis Golf Course, George Dunn, to try to help cover some of the expenses. So now, prior to 2003, did we invest what we should have invested in a lot of this equipment? Dan and I, no, we didn't. But now we're at a point, especially after the referendum, where we are we realize the investments and the capital needs of not just Burnham, but well, all of our golf courses, so now we want to make sure that we're making the proper de um, decisions for these courses. Next slide. So, the reason why we want your input is because we have some ideas, right? We have a, we know that we have an idea of over, at this point, over four million dollars. We know that at least over four million dollars is needed in order to at least get Burnham to the point where the capital is somewhat up to speed based, of all, based off of our National Golf Foundation report. However, due to some of the things that we that I pointed out earlier, such as Burnham's golf course op occupying over 100 acres and pretty much predominantly being most of the open space in this area, the lack of revenue that we are receiving because there's also <laughs> We have River Oaks Golf Course. We also have Joe Lewis as, as well as George Dunn. So a lot of these courses, what we find, especially between River Oaks and Barnum and, and Joe Lewis, we have some of the same golfers that are really bouncing and using all three of these courses because they're within a three to five mile radius of each other. So taking that into account, we ask, is this the best use? There's gonna be some investment, right? So we need to invest, we need to spend money. But do we spend money and invest in all 100% the 418 whole course? Do we invest and maybe consider making it a nine whole course and leaving some open space? Or do we have some open space, but then if we do decide to have open space, whatever that looks like, what are some of the things that this area, the people that live in this area want to see? But we also want to hear from the golfers too. Is this, is, if you want this to remain a golf course, we want to hear that. We want to hear that you want this to remain a golf course. And if you want this to remain a golf course, give us even some ideas of what do you think that will really um, progress this golf course to make it more popular um, and give you some more access so that we can really start getting to a point where we're at least making some revenue more than what the actual uh, expenses are. So this just gives you an idea. This is just a draft, again, a little markup that our planning department created, just to give some ideas of some potential things that can fit into this space. 
Um, and this is just the idea of if it was not a golf course moving forward. So it does have a potential of having things such as picnic groves, um, a walking trail. It also has the uh, potential of a fishing pond. And there's the, the clubhouse there can also be converted into a rental, a pavilion rental space so that you can rent it out for indoor events such as weddings or retirement parties or birthday parties. Uh, we don't have any indoor rental facility on this side of the county. Our closest indoor rental facility to you all would be Dan Ryan Woods. And that one is about 10 years old when it was actually completely renovated. Um, and it stays completely booked most of the time. But this again just gives you some ideas um, of exactly what the potential space would look like if it doesn't remain a golf course. But also think about if there are some things where you say, I want it to remain a golf course, but I also want some walking trails. What does that look like? And if that's something that you want, we want to hear that too. Uh, next slide, David. <coughs> so again, just to kind of give you some ideas, um, there's also a restored wetland area, fishing pond, and I know we do have an area, but it's not technically in Burnham, but uh, nearby Powderhorn that does have a fishing pond. I'm not sure how many of you all utilize that space, but it's just, again, some ideas to potential bridge of Burnham Woods. Uh, again, walking trails. Next slide. <coughs> Um, the other idea, because we are the forest preserve, they're much different than the park district and a lot of things that are within our mission, if you recall what I put in, uh, what I read earlier as far as restoring and natural space, so we're different in that piece, but we do value recreation, and but we just have to figure out what that balance is. So, okay, I'll come in the Thank you. So some ideas, some additional ideas that may work in this space is a nature play area. Um, again, I mentioned the picnic road for sledding, as well as, I don't know if everybody can see that, cross country skiing. These are some ideas that we currently have at other areas of our, of our other facilities, but we wanted to just, again, hear from you all. Is this something that you want to see in Burnham? Um, and some of this stuff can work in tangent with the golf course. Some of it cannot, uh, but again, it all depends on what you think will fit your needs, you and your family future needs, living in this particular area or even golfing in this area. All right, so what I'm going to ask you all to do, so I'm not just talking at you all all day, <laughs> so what I want you to do in this table here, we have post-its and we have pens. So we're going to lay out some um, boards here, and I, we really want to kind of talk to you, and we want you to kind of write down. If you want it to remain an 18-hole golf course, we want you to say that. If you want it to be a 9-hole, we want you to say that. If you want it to remain an open space and include any of this, we want you to say that. There's also surveys on the table. We want you to, if everybody can complete that survey, we want to make sure that we, even though you're going to put the board, put your post notes here, we still want the survey so that we can capture it and include it with the surveys that we uh, collected from our previous meetings. Um, and then before I end up, I'll get to you in a second, before I end up releasing you all, I just want to kind of let you know what the next steps would be as well. So there's also a, um, web, we have on our website the history of this project, again, that we've been working on since uh, 2021. So that's where we keep everything updated. And there's also, again, that survey that you're, the paper survey that you're completing. So if you have anybody that you know that you think should provide information, you can direct them to that page. And they can actually complete the survey as well. And then that's, and once we actually collect everything, we will follow back up. Uh, the mayor has been great with sharing contact information and getting information out. So once we come to a conclusion of what is going to happen based off of you all's feedback, we will actually follow back up and let you all know what those decisions are. And I'll let have my own site. www.f as in Frank, P as in Paul, B as in David, C as in Cook, C as in Cook.com. So fpdcc.com. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman with the mask on? Excuse me. Do you want to do a party for a reason? No, I've seen his hand first. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. No. okay, whatever. Oh, okay. I, 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 see, I see my question to the gentleman over there. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I see my question to the gentleman over there. Okay, no problem. Go right again, sir. Listen, you know, your own slideshow on 2022. You said there was nothing going on different. You don't know why it caused more. But in reality, I go off there every week. 
and a lot of improvements were made in 2022. And if you look at, the, at your own chart shows that you took in more money on 2023 then as a result of that. You so mean, that investment is already paying off. So based on our, so no, it's not. So our numbers, so overall, as I mentioned, golf has improved as an I'm industry. I'm over your tables. Golf has improved as an industry over since COVID, since 2020. Now, do we make improvements as far as fixing a bull if that is out or fix the HVAC system or fix that? We absolutely do. If there's any repairs to the ground, we absolutely do. That is part of our capital improvement. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done within not just Barnum, but within a lot of our all of our golf courses, to be honest with you, that it needs to we have to stop putting band-aids on things and we actually need to pull up and put new items in. Based and they did the a lot of work in 2022. Based, based off the revenue that's that why we received, revenue, that's why your expenses were up. Based off the revenue we received, <laughs> we do not have enough to cover. We're not we're not making enough revenue in Barnum, or any honestly a few other courses as well. But we're only specifically talking about Barnum. And are they all in the south, the ones that they are not making revenue? The data you just they're showed shows them more revenue than expenses in 2023. Oh. That shows the, the opposite of what you're saying. So here's what I'm going to. To do. Can you put the can you put the slide back up? Yes. That is in. I, I have a question for the mayor. I, and you if you're going to give us data, I, then. I, I, in order to make a decision, I think that we need to also see the impact that we're going to have in North Portland. Like the traffic and the people that is going to be arriving is not like going to open their square right. So we live there now. Which kind of people is going to be there? Which kind of the security we are going to have? Because as for now, I have in a meeting uh, Sunday at 2 p.m. in my house for my whole neighbors, uh, with my whole neighbors, because security is horrible. They are entering into the houses, they are stealing, they, we have horrible issues right now. Without golf course, without this. Now, you open doors to this, which is the plan to have security in that side? Well, I, I can answer part of that, and I'll let you answer as far as the outside of here. So as, as it relates to what kind of people, Cook County residents. So our forest, our forest reserves are open to every Cook County resident. No different than you can go to any uh, any forest preserve and have an event um, on the north side or southwest side. We open it up to every Cook County Is resident. Is forest reserve oh are, uh, providing any kind of security? So let, me finish, let me finish answering your question. So. Although Barnum has a police department, I'm not sure if everybody knows, the Forest Reserve actually has its own police force. So they control the security, uh, and you can probably attest to it, so they control the security within the Forest Reserve. So all, so actually even within our golf courses currently. So if you live in an area, you may have even seen a police car within the actual golf course because they still manage it, manage that space. So there's, they have the jurisdiction over that. However, our force reserves police do not have jurisdiction over what happens on the street. That's what I mean. Like, is there a study or something where we can be saving that side? Because once that you open the doors, I mean, that's it. We're uh, as a one hundred twelve reserve, uh, as our Calumet Park, like all kind of issues will start coming in. Like, uh, is this something that you guys are going to work together to provide that security? Now, we're going to have people parking there the whole day. We live there. Like, they can see our houses. Now, what's the... Well, what's put the, the bag up for a minute, you don't mind? Okay, put the bag up for a minute. You were saying that some criminal activity and people were breaking the house and doing all what is that? In the avenue, in, uh, from 141 to 142, oh even God. to the back, um, but 143 or whichever is the last street. I mean, I do not recall seeing that in the police reports. So if these things well, are it's happening, happening, like, like, like now, instead of like by up there, I mean, then we need to know about it. And you can call if you want to call. Pitch first, and then they're coming out and doing what they got to do. It happens at it happens at three to three thirty in the morning. Pitch first, and then coming back. I told you about this. I mean, but I'm saying, you told me to call the police. I mean, but I'm saying, if it happens, then we need to know about it. Yeah, and I, 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 have, I have contact with several uh, people. I'm not saying we don't have incidents, because every community has some type of incident, but they're having But it takes you 15 minutes to get there. No, like, you just, I call you here. You need to go all the way there. It's like 15 minutes. So, maybe you have the same issue with open up. Okay. So, so, I, so, ideally, again, I appreciate the concern, but that's exactly why we are here, 20 years old concern. So, we're going to be walking around because I want to make sure we stay focused on the, at least while we're here today, 
The mayor is going to be here as well. So if you have any questions that you want to ask that relates to what happens outside of the golf course, he'll be here to answer those. But we're going to walk around and ask, uh, talk to you all and really kind of get an idea and get your thoughts as it relates to the golf course. If that is a, the security is a concern. We want to hear that. We want to hear it on paper so that we can have that. What did that question say? So the question for those that could not hear him is the what is the amount that it would cost to actually turn it into a natural space? And is that about the same amount of money that it will cost to rehab? It depends. So it depends if we if there is a situation where we are doing I'll just use for an example a nine hole golf course and, and half of it natural space. But even when you're making something natural space, it doesn't cost you money to do that. So it really depends. It may be, of course, less to end up doing that. Now, if we end up completely rehab, reimagining the space into all natural space, it will cost ideally, just, again, depending on the some of the amenities. Ideally, it will cost about the same that it will cost to completely re re. Um, have the clubhouse, rehab the holes, the 18 holes. So that's the question. What, do we what, take that money and actually use it to completely rehab, or do we take it and use it to open space? So that's a great question. One, for, one further. Um, in the literature that I read, read it said that the golf course is going to point like. As far as I know, the river that runs past at the south end of it is not running anymore. It's just water. So it's not on the flood plain. The golf course, if I, if I can see this correctly, is the one that's next to the little town of the river, flood the whole the time. River Oaks Golf Course runs all the time. Yes. Why not close that one down and yes. give up one to the other one? And, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm. So we have not, so again, I'm specifically talking, so as I mentioned earlier, in 2021, we started the conversation, and I think I was going to remember you as maybe the one of the two of our meetings out of 2021. No, the, oh. the, the answer you're uh, getting the word out is horrible. Yes. I never knew about any of the meetings in the world. I agree. Yes. I mean, I mean, I mean, and your David doesn't support your argument. First, perhaps it was the mayor stuffing it in my mailbox. I got the word, and I'm here. I live directly across the street from the golf course. And as you say, uh, it's supposed to catch the water to stop flooding. Uh -uh. It does fill up with water, and I look out the door, and it's like, oh, there's so much water on the golf course, I need to look in my basement. But at any rate, um, the it, it you know it has rainwater. It does not flood as from a river. Number one. No, correct. Right. It, it holds the water, and that's the whole thing. So depending on the force, the actual force reserve, and how it's designed, it typically captures more water depending on what you put there. But for your initial uh, question or statement regarding River Oak, so we have looked at as part of this project, we looked at Edgebrook Golf Course which is in the near Codwell and Devon area on the far north side. We also looked at River Oaks and we looked at Burnham. The reason why we looked at these courses because again, that National Golf Foundation that we received gave us a report that these are the courses that needed the most significant investment. They also had issues such as flooding, like Edgebrook is around the next plane, it floods a lot. Um, and then they also are, the, these are the three courses that are not making sufficient revenue to cover the expenses. So that's why we're talking about these courses. So your other statement that you made as far as not being able to uh, reach you all and, and being able to communicate. So we did our, we worked with a consultant and we sent out uh, mailing. We work to, with our commissioners to try to send out information. But to, to your point, we did not hear what we wanted to hear. We did not see the people we wanted to see, which is why we did not. Which is why we did not make a decision. So we hear. Put in the water bill. Put in the water bill. Every time we have an event for fun, we put it in the monthly water bill. 
Now, there are some people don't get water bill because they live in an apartment building, and then we pass those flyers out. Now, I believe Trustee Hart just passed out some flyers a couple days ago. It's for the people who do not get the bill. Well, I mean, like this one. Yeah, why? We're still Cook County. No, we're still Cook County. Well, and we put it on the website. But that doesn't help me. And we put it on the website. It's still my community in the county. It's still my community. Right. I, have a I mean, we posted on the Billy Bond website, so you welcome to look at that. Okay, so what we're going to do, and I'll, what I'll, for everybody have a question, keep your hand up, and I'm going to come to you directly, but for everybody else, we're, we have pizza, we have uh, drinks here, but we want, again, we want you to complete the, we want you to complete your, your what you want on these posted, and we're going to walk around and answer any questions that you may have. Can I say something? Can I say something? Because I want to address the, all the people. Me too. May I, may I ask that question in front of all the people? Well, you can ask it, but I'm coming to you to answer. Because what I want to make sure is that everybody get a chance. I don't want us to monopolize the entire council. But I need you to hear it. I need you to hear more than I need the people to hear. Uh, I just want to share my story. I'm from Hegwish. I lived in Hegwish for 50 years. I played, no, 72 years I lived in Hegwish. I did live in Burnham uh, for a number of years right after I got married. I've been golfing at Burnham Golf Course for 50 years. And I, I remember the days where it took two hours to get on the course because it was, the parking lot was backlogged that much. Uh, I love Burnham Golf Course. I love, love, love that course. And I love the play. Uh, but I, I do want to say this. As I looked at the condition of the course in the last five, six, seven years, I don't feel it was managed properly. The fairway grass was this high. For a, a golfer like me who shoots about 100, it's, a, it's an impossible course for me to go and have fun. Three years ago, when my sons, we golf every weekend, and now I'm retired, I want to golf two, three times a week. Three years ago, I told my sons if we're going to burn them, I'm not going. And that's because of the way it was managed. The, the fairway uh, grass was that high. It should be cut fairway close for the average golfer to enjoy that course. Uh, what, what I really want to get across is that in the last couple of years, I'm going to say the last year, we've had different people taking care of the course. Mm -hmm. And it has been a pleasure to golf there. And I'm returning to the course, and I think if you uh, made that course more friendly to the average golfer, not only on the fairways, the conditions of the greens, but have a good concession stand, you will see a lot more people golfing there. I wanted you to hear that. And I just want to be clear. So we've had the same uh, management company since 2003. So we have, so it, it used to be Billy Casper Golf, but now it is Indigo. So they're the same company that has. Tyrone had Andrew. Andrew. That's what we're we don't have Tyrone. We have an Andrew. Is that who you're speaking of? No. Yeah. Okay. And Billy Casper golf so, course management is what ruined the court. When they took over that course, because I didn't like these gentlemen here, I've been playing that course since the 70s. I live in Burnham, right across the street from the court. That course was always crowded in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s. Billy Casper takes it over. Right away, they come out with a 40 hour car you got to have. And they raised the price five dollars. After the golfers were senior citizens, they went to Indiana. Where do you expect the rest of these golfers to go that pay a bird? For sure they're not going to play real well if that's a damn funeral. You know, it is. they're going to force the rest of these golfers, like right now, to go to Indiana and work for parks. That's oh, the a bit more, but I want to make sure that everybody can get a chance to Again, if you have a question, please, Lenora, raise your hand, raise your hand, and actually, there's pizza there. I taught pizza in person, and I do what everybody else is here. Are we passing out the information? We're not going to pass the information if you don't actually get the survey completed. Yeah, but I have a question about the survey. There's a question about... 
<laughs> the last board meeting, Trustee okay. John Cass said he was at the Barnum School College. Was that uh, Barnum board meeting? Yeah. Yes. Okay. He, he was at the, the Barnum School Town Hall, just like this. Back in September. Back in the, whatever it was, several months ago. And he said that he spoke with two gentlemen who were interested in buying on the 12 points. And he no, said they. That, I'm telling you what he told us. And I'll correct you. That's what I. That's what I'm saying. So he, he told us. He says, you know what? They're really interested in Vernon Woods out of the three. That's the first time I heard about these three. Is it, they're interested in uh, Burnham Woods mostly out of these three because it's the most uh, it really made a lot of money last year, which that backed up. It so there are that's no, what you no, that is what your no. table shows. So, so there are no two so wait, 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 there are no two investors that may be buying. Correct. So, so John Cap was let me correct you. So let me correct you. So back in twenty back in September thirty, we actually had our initial open house that was at the school. We had people so as I mentioned to you, we issued out an RFP back in twenty uh, two thousand and three, right? Which is where Billy Casper was actually granted that agreement. So that agreement actually expires. We extended that agreement expires the end of this year. So when we were in um, back in September, we issued out a new request for proposal, an RFP is what we call it, right? And what that basically says is we have these golf courses, we want to know who's interested in managing it for us and providing revenue. So we issued that back in September. So the guys that were there, there were two people, right? They were there, they represented two companies that were interested in managing our golf courses. So, yes. yes. so I don't think I don't think he understands the difference between managing and, and purchasing. But and it may just be a terminology, because you know people's terminology and vocabulary is different. That's why we have to make sure we share the same vocabulary. So we're all on the same page. So they were interested in managing the golf course. So when we actually and we actually end up closing it, so we're gonna be selecting a management company very soon uh, to manage not just Barnum, they're interested in our entire proposal. So as I mentioned, there's 11 golf courses. So we're not splitting up our golf courses. We're not splitting it up where one person can manage this or one person can manage that. We're looking pretty much similar to what we have now, where one company can help manage the golf courses for us, so that there's things like, I hear another somebody said they have like golf classes that they can use that there. We want to be able to have people that be able to have that thing like this. So we're not looking for five, six different people to manage our well, my other question, based on the 23 numbers that you showed 20, 22. Those are 2022. It's a 22 and 23. They're both up there. Right. Either way, either way, the revenues, showed something the revenues, showed the revenues, the revenues were overwhelming the expenses. For no, you that was, you look at the last one. Can you put it back up? Was the actual, no, it's more uh, uh, the it says expenses so, and revenues. So I'll show you. It says expenses and revenues. Put it up now. She's going to bring it to us or show us. I don't know. Think about it. 
I'm saying that these capital improvements that you made in 2022 are already starting to pay off. We didn't really do that many of them. So this is I why play that course every week. Yes, you did. We did. We did some. You, you did, did a lot. We did not do enough. When, when Reggie people, left and Tom came in, you did a lot. Okay, well, since you know that, I'm going to let you say that. But yes. Go back to your question. Well, based on this, would you not give Burnham Woods a chance to be self sufficient? But it shows. I'm asking, no, why wouldn't you? No, it's not a matter of that we. The problem is, well, I wouldn't even say a problem, but we have to invest. We don't have to invest in not just Burnham, but all the rest of the world. But they're creating the revenue without more help. That's Burnham. Burnham is not creating enough revenue to cover everything that needs to be done. What does the revenue consist of? Is that not the people paying the plate? There's people paying the plate. However, there are amounts of things that need to be done. The amount of capital that does not cover. You don't have to do it all at once. We don't, but sometimes we do because there's a lot of systems that are beginning to fail. Not just Burnham, but at George. We're Dunn. just talking Burnham. I'm trying to get Burnham stay self sufficient. Well, that's fine. So, did you, all you have to do I'm is saying there's no, no, no. I'm telling you, if they're self sufficient, <laughs> who makes the final call in this anyway? The commissioners. So, what, basically, what we're saying here tonight means nothing. No, so the you, process. No, you're just, you're just doing your job, and I can appreciate no, that. So, the process is we get your, I'm sorry, we get your feedback, right? How many commissioners are there? Let me finish. So, we get your feedback, right? What is your we make we meet internally and make recommendations and when I say we is myself as well as our tenant department, our financial department, we meet internally, we make recommendations to who we currently have as an interim superintendent. Once our interim superintendent says yes, let's go ahead and do what whatever recommendation is, then that proposal gets sent to the commissioners as well as Tony Craigwinkle, and they are the ones that make the final decision. All we, we do the leg work and we make the recommendations based off of feedback as well as surveys and all of the so communications this, this that we do. Here as far as what you guys get to decide. Is it Whoever it? puts more people to work raises our taxes is going to happen. That's that is a very incorrect line. statement because we don't even actually, so we have a management company. We don't actually run the course. I know that. And you know how I know that? Because about six years ago, the golf course was doing fairly well along the whole, and I live across the street, so I know far more than the golf course that could bear. The whole fence along the front was always clean and cleaned up. It was always nice. Now, within the last, hold on, I'm talking to her, within the last, within the last three years, <laughs> they let it overgrow. Where all the trees were in the front or nice cottonwoods, they let everything overgrow to wherever it was this tall. All the small shrubs, all that stuff. And they let all these vines grow up on the fences. So what was nice about five or six years ago, whatever company was coming in and managing it, did not do a good job. And then you guys had somebody hired somebody. So I think, what, I think what it really is, is no a new manager. Somebody hired Andrew. for a month. They came in and they brought in shepherds and chainsaws and worked for a month cutting off all the trees. I think that's so, that expensive. So the management company, there's a difference between, for example, it's really just a different uh, person or regional director. It's the same company, so it's not a different company. We have not switched companies. I just want to make sure that that's clear. It has been the same company who's had a 20 year plus breach with us. The quality of what we've done changed. However, and that's definitely no different than like a school. If you have a new principal, sometimes it will change. So we appreciate that feedback. And what I'm actually going to make sure I share that with them. But we want to hear. Again, what are some of the things as you being a golfer? Because we didn't want to just hear from the residents. We didn't want to just hear from the golfers. We want to make sure that we're hearing from everybody. So we're not volunteers. What is the, again, what is the, 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 what is 30, 30 years. And we have something with a life of 40, yeah. 50 with years, every, with everything. it's going to eventually start to break oh, down. And now we're getting to the down. point where it's starting to break down, and we have to invest in order to keep it up and running. Yeah, so that's why the question is, 
Okay, now we're at this point where we have, extra, we're barely keeping our head above water to put band-aids on it. Now we have these, now stuff is actually, you can't band-aid it. You need to completely replace it. So now what do we do? I can say before I go is that golf course, I would care to guess that 80% of Burnham has no idea that we have a golf course on that side of town. I just asked the trustee and he said, I didn't even know you had a golf course. I know that's true. That's a problem if it needs to stay profitable to stay open. And I don't know who was responsible for doing it. Somebody should have because now the sale is not profitable. This may not be a fair statement when you're talking about the children in this neighborhood and the young people. There were so many buildings that changed hands and homes in this town, especially on this side of the market, that I think a lot of people don't even realize it there. I would bet if there was a little more spend on advertising and making a few comments, I think you would bring a lot more people in the Burnham Golf Course than they could probably Before he leaves, let's all ask the question that you mentioned earlier. People that are in favor of the course can raise their hand. People that are not, obviously. No, I didn't say favor. I said who currently is golfing the course. Right. <laughs> so that that way we can hear because it's good. I think that's what I wanted right. to I wanted to make sure. Uh, the reason why I asked that question okay. is because I wanted to make sure we had pretty much a, a variety of diversity right. of people. Because I don't want to, again, just hear from the people. Right. I don't want people that don't know where the, that there's a golf course making a decision about the golf course. And I don't want people that actually use the golf course. But don't live in that area. They don't even know how lakes there. They well, like, and then making, making decisions. So my point of asking that is so that I, as part of our yes. report back, we know who was in the room. I golfed there probably eight times okay. this last year. Before that, that's why I learned how to golf. I grew up with my, my youngest oh, stuff. Okay. So Burnham has been very instrumental. Okay. But all of this stuff that's here, we already have kind of powder lake, even fish and powder, powder horn. Let's just say that they wanted to do an open space to do the picnic stuff. There's no parking lot big enough in there for that because there's a lot of land. And I get it. There's some flooding that takes place for the ones who go off there. We, we've experienced that. But you learn to live with that and hope that Tyrone's done a great job, by the way, with what he has. Again, like they say, you're, you're limited to your expenses and the list goes on. Yeah, and, and just for uh, clarity, you mentioned parking specifically. With anything that we do, we also make sure we create a, a ratio based on the attention that we come to the area to make sure that we have enough parking for it. For example, a lot of our parking, uh, we, grows, we do a three to one ratio to make sure that we're not saying that there's a growth capacity of 500 people, but yet it's only 20 parking. That doesn't make All they're going to do is parking in neighborhood. So we don't do that. <laughs> so we make sure that if that is something that the area said that is a need for, that we make sure that we make it make sense. And can you confirm for me, you said that the for them to do a park or some kind of picnic thing would be the same cost to repair? Ideally. Maintain, it may, right? Again, Ideally? it depends. Of so, course, give or take, it depends on some of the amenities. But my point is, whether we leave it as a golf course or some other type of event, it's still going to be the same amount of people that are going to be using it. We have to invest that staff time in it. Because now that's the other investment, right? So now this will be moving forward our staff time to maintain it. Right. So our police to continue to really watch it. So that's additional staff time. So okay. we, when you look at the long-term investment, it's still staff hours and, and pay that have to be done. There's still, again, a general maintenance that needs to be done. What's the so, main so, course possible to, to maintain something? Because there's a lot of great space in that whole area. Mm -hmm. So you, what's your question? What's the nine Well, course? Burnham did own that at one time. Did you know that? We gave it to, did you know Burnham owned that and we gave it to the county? A lot of our spaces were... Just curious if you knew well, that. Well, a lot of our spaces, like River Oaks, was actually owned by the condominium. And did you know Burnham owned it? And that's when uh, uh, Johnny Patton was our mayor and Al Capone used to come into Burnham. And they had, did you know there was a swimming a pool? There's a swimming pool. There's a foundation for a huge swimming yeah, pool. Yeah, I've heard about the underground tunnels and everything. You don't the park district. You still have the park district. You still have the golf course. Burnham's still in the park district. There's a lot of history of Burnham, isn't there? Oh, yeah. 
Deep history. Huh? Right. Right. You're right. I'm sure you do. We're hesitant to change, man. I've never seen. What's the final decision being made from it? We don't really have a day line, so it I don't think I've ever seen it. The government or anybody take in charge or something. Right, right, right. I mean, it's true. What they'll do is they'll dump a bunch of money and put a fence around it so you can't use it, charge them money, and then that's the end of it. You're right. You're absolutely right. Well, we need to charge money because we did all these expenses and all these. Right. It's, you know what? If somebody said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to tear down the fence. And just let people use it at will. Right. We're going to cut the grass on the end of it. I think I'm all for it. Right. I'm all for it. Right. You know, I got pictures. I got pictures of the golf course. Had, I got pictures of the golf course that had no fence. And no trees. Rest assured, there's a lot of potential. This gentleman indicated there. This guy's had questions since we got here. So, if people have, as I say, people have the opportunity to send their information to the county forest district, right? Yeah, if one could say, like, you could send your information to any commission. Right at all. Absolutely, you're right. 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 Absolutely
So what is your main concern? What, what made you I'm like come? A golf course there. I golf on it every week. And you think that they're gonna close it if we're not? That's what she said. Did she say that if we wanted to keep it open, it can be open? What makes you think that it's not gonna remain open? Because she wants to talk to the people that want to do other things, and she doesn't even want to talk to the people that want to leave it as a golf course. And even if if 100% of the people decide to keep it, you think they're still gonna change it? I don't know. You know, I'm not talking to my county commissioner tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do. I know that there's talk about extending Burnham Avenue with an overpass or an underpass, and I was told pre previously that this is gonna affect the golf course. She says it's not. I don't know, but it seems like you better have a real firm, firm decision from uh, from uh, from IDOT on what they're gonna do with Burnham Avenue before you spend nickel one on changing, taking the golf course out and spend millions of dollars playing the nature trail, which I understand. Anyway, you know. Do you think that your presence tonight maybe, will make maybe any difference? Maybe I should put a nature trail see if you're just dealing with but I mean, fix the powder one. Fix the north end of powder one. Looks like they can, they can put in a nature trail there. Mm -hmm. Why not? I do you mean, think that, that? Do you think that you're, by you being here present tonight will make any difference? Remains to be seen. This is the first. It's the first meeting that a bunch of us have even heard about. There will be more golfers here than there was on previous. Cause we didn't know about it. First, first time I heard about a meeting. She says they held other meetings. I don't know. I didn't hear any word. All right, thank you. Know. you. I'm for whatever the people, whatever the people want to do. You want to do the golf course? That's cool. But I just want you to come out to let your voice be known. That's all I care about. I want you to come out, let the people know, let the commission know how you feel. That's what I care about. Okay, my name is Herbert Wilkins Jr. I'm a resident of Vernon. And um, I came for the community meeting about the golf course. I think it was a very productive meeting. I think that a lot of people had a very uh, uh, good idea of what direction the golf course should go in, especially the added golfers. They had a lot of input. And uh, my main, my greatest concern is that, that a lot of people, you know, other residents don't golf, so we should include other little things like hiking, biking, so we can include other uh, uh, res uh, people uh, in the community to be involved as well, just along with the golfers too, so it can be uh, a, a joint thing where nobody feel like they left out. That's the only comment. But other than that, it was, a you know, everybody had a, a lot of point of view, and that's the way it should be, you know, so hopefully it'll be resolved. Thank you.